We did some transfer metro research, and now we use other approaches, action design research, as an example of this. What I talk about today, I don't know, about 50 minutes talk, and then I'm happy to answer questions about it. And, but a little bit about my background, most of it was very nicely already said by Isabel. Then I talk about why you engage with practitioners, and then I shortly present our records. I have a paper references available, in, and I will make the slides available. Then I'll talk about actual topics that we will compete with and wrap up with some comments. Okay, this was all said already. I just showed here, this is our new tennis school building, and I must say that I, it was quite an experience to be part of Part of this, I was uh, in the uh, the committee that was looking at the, or uh, ACWES report that was looking at the, the civil open from the city school side, and I was uh, responsible for the uh, audiovisual things in there. One thing I would like to note in here is that this is not only the details. We've actually come here ahead of this. I'm very worried about these, these, and uh, Things in here, so there's a, a pipeline, pipe that, and there are wires in here. We have everything else on the radio side was very well done in there, except that there's one multi-purpose room, but it was divided in half. It was divided in half, and there was a rail in, in the, in the uh, up there, and they wanted to have the fiber cables put in. Above the rail, so it, it wouldn't be done during the, the teaching hours, so that we have to wait for the next summer before it be corrected. But it says that heels and these things don't match. Why do I put cables cut so easy with these? So think about this classification. You may never have thought about this. Here's something about my business background. I might be an owner and former board member of the Federation Consulting, so this is uh, a company that we formed with my uh, two students that we 30 years ago when we were, we were still students and it's still up and running, so I have practiced on that page here, we have been engaging with practitioners, and I always say that. Here probably many people still remember what is, what is a feature phone, the, the phones before, before the smartphones. And every uh, not yet feature phone uh, had code that was done with, with this old tool. I have been also talking about duty since the public related and common selling open source software. This was also a very interesting experience because I was there when it went public. Here I'm in, in the October, a couple of years ago, updating my boat. It's a uh, it's software uh, and it's slightly older in Finland at that time. It's about minus three and I'm updating it actually with this software. Uh, so that's why I have a picture. Here's the office of the other thing about our university. So we are a young university, we are 13 years old. And we were formed by putting together the University of, of Art and Design, the Mahesha School of Business, and the Technical University of Finland. This is also this is a great design example in my, my view. The politicians, this was like national level initiative, the politicians tried to put together the designers, design school, business school, and technical university. And you immediately to have great products that look nice and say that it took some time from us, but now I believe we are better than before in this. Then, the last topic why you should engage with practitioners? In my opinion, we are in an applied field, so 
that we can theorize that the important thing is that we use our knowledge and tools to make people's lives better. And we are chancer the digitalization and artificial intelligence and so on, better people in unforeseen and often unexpected ways. We have been quite good at saying that every act that comes, every new disruption is good. If you look at and the reality of people's lives and people's work, it's not always that the new, new things are better for them. So we should be reflecting and listen carefully to practitioners as they change their ways of living and doing business. I will have several examples of these in the other slides. In my opinion, we should engage early also with the policy makers and analyzing the technologies so that we are not just reporting the bad things that happen and use it explain by theories why something went bad or wrong. But we should be proactively uh, telling people to avoid disasters. I remember we were following <laughs> our university engaged with the University of Helsinki and developing a new register system. So we are big for the schools and universities we want. And our idea was just to follow it from start the development and just be like a case for us. But we decided that we'll have to actually say to them that now we know what's going wrong because we couldn't just follow the trade. Or because we have our own potential here because we want to have a system. Yeah. I see this as important people. We should be engaging actively. This leads to my approach to impact and working with practice. So, as you can research is a method that is most published in the MS Project 2011. It's uh, I've seen and uh, as Ura, Mia, Rikard, Lindgren. And the idea is to integrate action research and design research. I'm not going to go deep in the case, but the basic idea of being that we always take action. We engage the practitioners by introducing technologies for them and understanding what happens to them. And we see that information systems has a dual mission. So it acts to exist in theory and produce knowledge to support practitioners in solving their current and anticipated problems. And this is kind of the key idea here. We, we are not only theorizing about things, but we should also be able to set up our own practices in the in the work. And for me, the core that separates implement systems from other disciplines is development of an engagement with implement systems architects. And not defining how we have the other basic idea here is that when we do implement systems research, it has something to do with software systems, or in some cases hardware systems, and the actual uh, see how those are either developed or used. And the Nuremberg and Briggs quote in here is from the last mile article. Our aim is to improve the ways people create valuable information. This quite simple statement, but the improvement here is important and also that it is creating value to avoid uh, uh, destroying value in the information. The action design research is quite simple process. Those who know action research, uh, very similar ideas in here. So what we have here is basically two nested tools. So we have the output, then we have proper formulas, and the VIE, uh, it's at explain the next slide, and reflection learning. The idea here is that we first spend some time really thinking about the problem so that we solve the right problem, and then we go into this building and intervening in organization, and there's the inner loop where we actually try these things out, and then at times we go into the outer loop back to reflection and learning and see whether we are still doing the solving the right problem. And then in the end there's formalization and learning. For me this formalization and learning is also 
very important because many people who build stuff, they like to build stuff, but they see the writing part as boring. And this is important because then we don't uh, uh, reinvent the video so much. We have an example or a picture of the, the uh, building uh, built in the middle cycles. The idea here is, uh, you can see, we have different roles in here. So researchers, practitioners, and end users. And, and then you have artifacts. And, and first we have something like offers that people use. And end, end users use, practitioners, think further, researchers have evaluate. And notice that these roles can be and should be mixed. You have the practitioners, in many cases I, I see this done so that doctor students are both practitioners and researchers and they work in certain environment, certain organizations. And we have these groups, then you read by universes of, of the software, and you keep doing this until you have uh, something to show. Uh, there are open questions about what is the stopping condition here. And usually the stopping condition is either that the practitioners say that this is enough, we can't do it anymore, or if you will have to have publications or the doctoral process comes to an end. Then we have the people out of this, so we quickly can formulate the results. And, and here we have the, a, a scholar knowledge contribution, which is the paper that we use all the time. Then we have uh, the organizational knowledge contribution, and the idea is that the organization actually has learned something about this, and they are better afterwards. And the important thing is end, of, end user knowledge contribution. End users should come from our projects. Uh, with more knowledge about the digital systems that we that they, they work and we are not using this them as something that we get information from but we are also guiding them, we are giving them advice and hopefully show them new technologies and how they actually work. And then we explain the artifact. These are often different contributions, and different knowledge contributions could be user manuals, training, and so on. And I said the formalization, story outputs, is theses, papers, and so on. And we have identified dimensions and tensions in these projects. And here we have a highly simplified picture where we have a research team and industry partner. They have very different concerns. So, researchers obviously have the research demands, and the industry partners have the practice, part, uh, pra practice demands. And here, the idea is that if you look at it from the research side, when the practitioners say that they have problems, that they, they don't have information not available, or information quality is not enough. We like to see it as, uh, as researchers as an instance of some more general, general problem to which we can apply theories which leads in the knowledge generation to, to be arising and turn off outcomes. There's, there's, the practitioners are interested in their own problem instance. So why do our systems work? Why is our data not available as we want? And then they are worried about taxes and costs, how to make this work in a reasonable cost and reasonable time. And then they are interested about specific outcomes, how our system works in the end. And they are actually studying the state waiting practice and article that we have been working on, <coughs> looking at practitioners and researchers using our method. And what we noticed in there is that uh, the researchers always say that the practitioners are really interested in, 
helt inte tvinga på det var så att det var nu precis just på början, men det är en case, det är en in case process. Att det är less in case än just that talking about could be have like a lot of interviews with this person called what we do learn and so on. And how we see that this can be solved is kind of an institution. Someone provide them with small things on the way. way. And we see quite simple things like workshops we practice as giving them feedback early on as ways of giving them the new dates. But this, this comes repeated in the doctoral process. And I believe this is general problem for any design or action research project that, that we need to do. And for me it's logical that this leads into in a way we need to market certain degree our research practice. How we how we, how they benefit from us because we are we have also remember that for the practitioner we are some people who come and harass them with our questions and Perhaps we introduce them with really bad ideas and, and so on. So they, 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 they take risks also and we need to start for them. And the example of, of this is with only hydrovolic plant. The use of applet, use of in the project and, and uh, we did uh, a safety training in open the field environment for the Swedish database. And the idea was that personal safety and security training is not engaging and not very active, not very it is done in in a little bit dangerous and not often unrealistic environment. Whereas if you use uh, an open reality headset and tools, you, you do it much more in a realistic way. So realistic and safety experiment in clinical situations. Also it's much cheaper than uh, realistic uh, in conditions. Everybody has seen on the sides of the like uh, like runways, this uh, parts of uh, uh, of big fuselages where people go to, 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 to fire safety training. This is, picture is not uh, somebody cleaning uh, uh, the walls, but this is a, an actual uh, a train engineer uh, is using a fire with, with the so they have these devices, so they have this open utility headset and this this thing in, in his hand is a fire extinguisher that is connected to the system. And the reactions and evaluations on training have been very positive. We actually still feel in this environment. Also, this doesn't need any other special equipment than just the, the headset and the school and the good reason for simple things. Those is also there's a, there's a, a fan which is some realistic. So the, so the, and the fan provides an happy, uh, happy interface. <coughs> and I have a note in here that we try to develop this in the multi user person who gets much stuff or so. And you have one person try it, it's real on the straight forward. And then we try to have uh, immersive environments that there are several people. Then we go into metaverse type of set things, and these are still heavy on the construction, so it's practical as it comes. All right, now I'm moving to the second part of my talk. So, challenges of visualization, that this is more about where we could do this thing and how we do it. Uh, Digitalization is also a source of problems. Does anybody identify the plane in here? It's double winglets are not very visible, but this is a uh, 737 900, formerly known as 737 Max. And I took a picture before in working with it because these things are known to have 
criteria of very stupid. It's a, a two times that in the programming. Mm-hmm. So these are just their source of problems. They, they were actually trying to complete the fair parts, and they had a, they had new end sense to accept too big for to be below the beam of the older design of 727. So somebody had a nice idea to take it to a shop to get the shortest program. It didn't work that well. Data security and data privacy are other issues and there are challenges in here. And then systems resilience and search power concepts and unsustainability. Uh, do you know what the other picture below is? It is a, this is a four e yakka in it. It's actually this is one of the the copies. There was a little white actual so those four four yakka uh, four e yakka in it is the special and then he grades and then there are two uh, the two copycats. Okay, they are already some copycat and they have five. Now all of these are workers, but at some point of time the collection of these these bits of pictures of four pages were several hundred million value the value was several hundred million dollars. <coughs> now we are just studying some of these and nearly all of these NPR, original bits of NPR is more or less good. I find sad that they also miss it. I'll talk a little bit more about topics of resilience and service sustainability. What is resilience in, in this side? It's a bit of risks and attacks. Is that something? Does anybody know what the picture presents? So this is from Paul there's a when gas pipe has exploded. This is actually from a year ago, but a week and a half ago, in between Finland and Estonia, another pipeline exploded. And, and uh, this resilience has taken really importance in there. The other thing is, you are here in quite a nice position because you have a, my understanding, a neighborhood that has no act interest in cutting tables between you and them. And, and, and then I ask you also have tables going to the economy. And these are quite vulnerable. Yet the picture here is the Northern uh, the, the Scandinavian University Network. It's one of the fastest uh, 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 networks in the world. But it's also, you can see that from Helsinki, there are just a couple of pointers. The green line it is right, it's actually a, a line a line next or table next to it was broken last week. And we have like now two or three tables left. We should be fine with this. This sounds like this is far away from the information system, but these are issues that come come to us. It doesn't need to be more than somebody accidentally talking at an anchor and going to your post line and then and then things go wrong. So there will be need for things like need network rerouting this is more computer science stuff. The ability to recover from power failure is kind of important. And we need to work with our networks and servers. We need to design things for people. We answer that there's constant connection. Available. All jobs are very good until you don't have the connection. There are, there, there are many apps that we rely on that don't work at all if you don't have a network connection. Then there are more design issues for us. This design for longer lifespan of services. Maybe that we have to think of how in this service be available for five, ten years instead of two years. This means you have lesser demand for hardware. This means that we can use for longer time, time the hardware that we, we have. This is actually interesting. We have been studying, studying studies about media 
will immediately pay more premium. We've talked about looking at programming and so on. About 80% of the footprint of media production comes from the hardware booth in there. So it's all about how long you use the hardware and, and that instead of thinking about how we could do it a little better program. I'm not saying that we shouldn't think about things like how to have smaller footprint for our services and so on. This comes certainly to the hardware. This conflict comes to the sustainability design. This sustainability thing hasn't been that much discussed as a design issue, but it is coming to the more energy efficient designs. Certain mobile video are used all the time. And when you get into things like 6G networks, you will have thousands and thousands of devices that send, send the stuff into the network. It's all fashion networks use enormous amounts of energy. But then you have more energy at the same design. Ethereum moves more from proof of work to proof of state. It's immediately put about 95% of Ethereum's uh, carbon proof in the day. And we have things that have lesser hardware requirements. This is again to be designed, proposed designs. Most of, most of the time, we can even do them without the latest and greatest hardware. And then, let's discuss the technology changes. <coughs> this is again, we should think about how to get the current hardware software current for long time. So, can we use this, this for a long time now? No, I know we need technology of headphones. Nokia is again in trouble, I heard yesterday, and I remember looking at when Nokia tried to compete in smartphones with, together with Microsoft. And then two years they went into a technological gap and they had a Windows phone. It's, in my opinion, was really something okay phone. But, but the issue was that the first phone they provided was for personal. It was 8.1 of Windows Phone, and that had different hardware specifications from the next less than a year afterwards, I mean 8.5. So the phone would be less than a year obsolete. These are no good things. We are, in most cases, we are not able to perfect these, but we can talk about these issues when the projects of the developers. Now companies see this as real issues. Next thing I want to talk about is ethical digital design. So this is again when we talk to practitioners, I see this as coming really big in the future. So this is about better control of data. I, I don't know if you have heard that X, only known as Twitter, uh, is thinking about Bitcoin from Europe because of GDPR and all of the ugly things that you can't have fake news here without ramifications. Um, this, uh, many people say that these are brilliant innovates. Uh, there can be over, overreactions. So GDPR, for example, some companies are very, very about doing research with us because they are very something leaks to us and then they, they will have financial issues with this. But I believe that this better control of data and who, who uses it, who owns it, is a design issue in the future. This affects when you have your students working on simple designs, quality data. We are collecting research data and so on. This, this affects everything. And I hope that we get better. I have been working with some of these my data initiatives where you control your own data. I like the ideas, but I don't see it as realistic because I would say that 70 or 80 percent of the people are very of these things, but they couldn't get the legs about really thinking about how they how their data and who wants them. 
can full time for solos and not talking about the is another part of this need to train just a little of the committees. This is actually just the teaching issue for us. Why you shouldn't what design goals you have and where they should be the Scandinavian Scandinavian approach to implement system research that should start with from labor rights and how do they make work with the big time implement systems design. Now it seems like long time ideas and they didn't always work. And now I can see we have these kind of ideas are coming back because many of the old fields, artificial intelligence and big data ideas are such that our our work life becomes more boring and more repetitive unless we lead in peace. At the, in the picture here, this, this is taken outside of the, what is it, the Conscious School of Design in New York. And there's plenty of this service design going on, which you might immediately notice that there's, obviously there's a, there's the deep end of the, of the deep economy, so then there's one um, white person who, who is delivering food for somebody, and then the more interesting, the more interesting thing in there that's behind it is what is called laundry of beans. So the previous man in there is getting their car, which comes, you put your order and put an application, they come and pick your, pick your laundry and then they return to you after a while. I don't know if they have actually, the laundry is done on the video, so they stop somewhere. And the obvious ethical thing here is what are the design goals? And this is for the research and teaching institute. So, do we teach students that they understand that, uh, that what are the design goals? Is it exploiting workers? Yeah. For example, Amazon is known for measuring every second and every step that you take in the warehouse. And it's the best place of supporting workers, which would be other approaches. And this is when we talk about algorithm, algorithm management, where the algorithm says that you got one bad video last, last year, so you are making redundant now. Is it right? Is it wrong? I was, I was, uh, in the summer, I was, uh, Buying a new car or, or leasing. And in the end of the process, it was a very, very good process and we had good experience. And in the end of the process, the sales person said that, could you please give this, you will be sent the message and please give, give all of these files for this measure because otherwise I will be able to come. This is like, I understand somebody has been taken somewhere there. Um, but I don't know if they really came came with this these kind of things. More generally here, what can be designed? What should be designed? The consumer must serve as obvious in the this meta thing that I was showing in here, one of the first companies that that, that contacted us was Radiant Systems, which is Really, really good at making cruise with stuff. And we were thinking about it and we decided not to pursue things to have. And these are, these are also, this is not, not easy. If somebody is given a choice of having no work or working for a surveillance design company, it's difficult. And you don't always know, and most of the developers don't have any. We want to over this, but we can advise policy makers about the choices. We can also teach our students about things that you should know about these issues. That what is legal, what is not. Again, talking about uh, electric cars. Uh, electric cars send amazing amount of information about you and your habits. To the, to the company. 
companies sell them to marketers. I humbly believe the TDP or that is so that they it is not so in Europe. But I don't know about it. I know that car makers sell it, do it in the United States and Asia. Tesla gives you a lot out from their the data sale programs, but they said that if you don't if you opt out of the data sharing here, you don't have maps in here, you don't get updates, and it might be that your breaking doesn't work as good as it would be. So then that's not a real choice for anybody. You have to give them the it's a kind of big thing. I can see solutions that this would work. But so that they get enough data and I'm reasonably happy with my life. Their explanation for me to share this is that they can give you better time-based advertising. Right? One that is the price too high. These were most of what I wanted to say. There are some, some remarks in here. There are 2,500 Google Scholar citations for the, this article. So articles and got journals used to mention in the empirical work, and there are articles extending this and other things. I'm also, I must say that I feel that there's some importance to this when somebody has been saying that this is not needed at all. There are articles about it, so, it, so that there's some importance. Why not say that research opportunities is try to stay relevant to the community around us, so we can't be in ivory towers theorizing. We should do some theorizing, but the most important thing is that we solve real problems for real people, and we solve, solve the, the people that we work with, that we care, and we deliver them some value other than that, and don't treat them as famous. This was for me quite interesting experience spent one year here in the United States in a, one of the top schools in there. And what was a big surprise for me that in top schools people saw it that, that working the practice was a hint class. It slows down your publication on top of this article, top quality publications. Whereas when you went into like local uh, over the universities and into the state level the universities, they had to work with practitioners in the local area. They were deeply, they had deep time with them. They provide the workforce for these local locals. I remember this in Memphis, and your VHL as their headquarters. They had quite deep developments with them. And then at the same time, they could get back information and research of problems from them. And we try to enhance the lives of people through our research. And I believe that there's a huge need for our research to be relevant for us. So making life better, making systems more resilient, no longer for privacy. These type of things, some of these are quite small changes that we can advise companies about and you can advise police makers and the, and the general public about this. So if you do these kind of things, you are a little bit safer and, and your life is better. And we, we should look at how the work is changing, when everything is measured, when artificial intelligence comes for traditional white color and so on. This is actually what I want to say, it's a few eight seconds less than a little bit of a So, now it's time for questions, comments, and questions.